Hi all, welcome back. In this session, we will discuss how one can quantify the relationship between two numerical variables using correlation analysis. So what is correlation analysis? Correlation statistics measures the association between two continuous variables. Variables can have positive or negative relationship or they can have no relationship at all. Correlation statistics also measures the degree of association between two continuous variables. Correlation coefficient is one of the most important statistics which is used by most of the data analysts and data scientists. A common correlation statistics used for continuous variable is the Pearson correlation coefficient. The Pearson correlation coefficient measures the linear relationship between two numerical variables. It is denoted by R. It is a unitless quantity ranging from minus 1 to plus 1 where r equal to minus 1 and r equal to plus 1 corresponds to perfect negative and positive relationship and if r equal to 0, it indicates no relationship. One can easily calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient by using this particular formula. The formula is very simple. It is covariance of x and y divided by the standard deviation of x and y. What x and y here is, it is the value of the ith element in the data set, x bar and y bar are the sample mean and n is the sample size. In practice, it is often an area of interest to test the hypothesis. Here our null hypothesis is that r equal to 0, that there is no relationship between the two variables and the alternate hypothesis is that r is not equal to 0 and there is a relationship between two variables. Moreover, correlation coefficient also tells the strength of the association between two variables. If absolute value of correlation coefficient is between 0 and 0 0.19, it is regarded as very weak association. Whereas, if the value is between 0 0.2 and 0 0.39, it is considered as a weak association between two numerical variables. Whereas, if the value is between 0 0.4 and 0 0.59, it is considered as moderate association between the two numerical variables. However, if the value of correlation coefficient lies between 0.6 and 0.79, it is considered as a strong association between the numerical variables. And if the value is greater than 0.8, it is a sign of a very strong association between the variables. Now let's see some scatter plots between two numerical variables that will give you an idea that how strongly those variables are associated with each other. If you see this scatter plot, it will give you an idea that both the variables are highly correlated with each other and in positive direction. Whereas, if you see this particular scatter plot, you can get an idea that again they are highly correlated with each other, but the direction is downwards. And this scatter plot tells you that they are not at all related with each other. And you can see the R value is also 0 0.02, which is very close to zero. Since Pearson correlation coefficient is a parametric test, one should make sure that certain assumptions are met and they are the two variables should be measured at interval or ratio level. There should be a linear relationship between the two variables. Both variables should be normally distributed. Each observation in the data set should have a pair of values. It means that each observation in the data set should not have a missing data. A Pearson correlation coefficient is very sensitive to outliers and they heavily affect the calculation of the correlation coefficient. Even one outlier can substantially changes the Pearson correlation coefficient between the two variables. In such situation, it makes sense to remove the outlier from the data set. Now let's talk about the non-parametric correlation coefficient. But before we proceed further, let's understand the difference between the linear versus monotonic relationship between the numerical variables. So what is linear relationship? When two variables move together at the constant rate, then the variables have linear relationship. Think of a straight line. Whereas monotonic relationship measures how likely it is for two variables to move in the same direction, but not necessarily at a constant rate. For example, the upward exponential curve would have a strictly positive monotonicity because as x increases, y also increases, but the curve line is not linear. And the rate y changes vary at different values of x. So that is the difference between linear versus monotonic relationship. Now let's discuss about the non-parametric correlation method. The first method is Spearman correlation. 
स्पियरमैन को रिलेशन इज द मेजर ऑफ मोनोटोनिक रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन टू कंटिन्यूस और ऑर्डिनर वेरिएबल्स इट इज लेस सेंसिटिव टू आउटलायर्स इफ स्पियरमैन को रिलेशन कोफिशियंट ऑफ अ वेरिएबल इज क्लोज टू जीरो इट मीन्स देयर इज नो मोनोटोनिक रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन वेरिएबल्स द स्पियरमैन को रिलेशन कोफिशियंट इज बेस्ड ऑन द रैंक वैल्यूज फॉर ईच वेरिएबल रादर देन द रॉ डेटा एंड द को रिलेशन कोफिशियंट ऑफ स्पियरमैन रेंजेस फ्रॉम माइनस वन टू प्लस वन The second non-parametric correlation method is Candle Tau. Candle Tau is similar to Spearman correlation coefficient, while it can often be used interchangeably with Spearman's correlation coefficient. However, Candle Tau is more robust and generally preferred method over the Spearman correlation method. The next one is partial correlation coefficient. Partial correlation is the measure of association between two variables while controlling or adjusting the effect of one or more additional variables partial correlation can be used in many cases that assess for the relationship for example whether or not the sales value of a particular category is related to the expenditure of advertising when the effect of price is controlled the next one is hoffings d correlation it is a measure of linear monotonic and non monotonic relationship it has value between minus 0.5 to 1 The science of Hoffing coefficient has no interpretation. However, there are some important points one should take care of. If a Spearman correlation coefficient is close to zero and a very high Hoffing dense d, you can say it is close to one, it indicates a non-monotonic relationship. If a variables are insignificant on both Spearman and Hoffing dense d correlation matrix, it means the relationship between them is random. Let's say if a variable have a very low Pearson correlation coefficient, let's say close to zero, and a very high Hoffings and d, let's say close to one, it indicates a non-linear relationship. Now let's do some examples and see how we can calculate correlation statistics in SAS using PROCOR procedure. The CORE procedure in SAS computes parametric me measures of association, that is Pearson correlation coefficient, as well as the non-parametric correlation coefficient, such as Spearman correlation coefficient, Candle Tau, Hoffington DE's measure of dependence, as well as polychroric and polyserial correlation coefficient, as well as the probabilities associated with these statistics. Now let's see the syntax of PROCOR procedure. So the syntax you can see here it is very simple. You start with PROCOR and then various options for it. You can also use the by statement. it specifies group in which separate correlation analysis are performed one can also use the freak statement it specifies the variable that represent the frequency of occurrence for other variables in the observation one can also use id statement the id statement specifies one or more additional tip variables to identify observation in scatter plots and scatter plot matrices then there is a partial statement The partial statement identifies controlling variable to compute Pearson, Spearman, or Candle Tau's partial correlation coefficient. Then where statement, the where statement lists the numerical variables to be analyzed. Weight statement it uses with Pearson correlation coefficient. The last one is width statement. The width statement lists the numerical variable with which correlation are to be computed. Now let's analyze the data set which we are going to work on. The data set which we are going to work on is FISH data set, and one can access it from SAS Help library. Let's print the first five records to see how our data looks like. Data equal to SAS Help dot FISH OBS equal to five run. You can see here there are seven variables. Species is a categorical variable, whereas weight, length one, length two, length three, height, and width they are the numerical variables. Let me verify the data type by using proc contents statement. Data equal to sas help dot fish run. You can see here species is the character data type, whereas height, length one, length two, length three, width, and num are they are numerical variables. 
Now let's try to examine the relationship between numerical variables using scatter plot. But prior to that, let me sort the data is equal to sas help dot fish and let me get the output out equal to fish by species run. Now let me use proc freak statement to see the distribution of categorical variable species fish table species run so you can see here there are three four five six seven seven species of fish are there in our fish data set and you can see the frequency of those species it is always a good practice to examine the numerical variables by creating scatter plots to see whether there are any outliers and also to see whether there is a linear relationship or monotonic relationship or there is no relationship at all between the numerical variables moreover the variable which we are interested in is the weight variable you can say it is a target variable and rest of the variables are independent variables such as length 1 length 2 length 3 height and width and we will try to see how they are associated with weight variable. Now let's create a scatter plot using PROC SG scatter procedure. I will call PROC SG scatter data equal to fish plot weight. We are going to use length one jitter. We also want to have the regression line title association of weight with length one run. So here it is a scatter plot between length one and weight and if you examine it for most of the fish follow the linear relationship i.e. the length goes up the weight of the fish also goes up however you can see here there is a group of fish where length of the fish goes up but the weight doesn't go up at the same rate and you can also see here that there are certain group of the fish where the weight goes up but the length one doesn't increase in that particular proportion in this trend because of the certain kind of the species where length one goes up but weight doesn't go up in that particular proportion now let's create scatter plots for each species and analyze association between weight and length one let's do that what i'll do is i'll copy this particular code and i'll call the by statement by species and it will generate a scatter plot for each and every species in a fish data set so you can see here we have created a scatter plot for each and every species and you can see for bream it seems it has a linear trend there are no outliers as such similarly for paki you can see here it's a perch group where are certain fishes between length 20 and you can say 28 or 29 when the length increases the weight does not increase in that particular proportion otherwise you can see for the rest of the fish species there seems to be a linear relationship now let's try to find out the association of weight with other numerical variables and one benefit of using proc hg scatter is that you can run it once to create a panel of multiple scatter plot what we are going to do is we are going to create a macro variable using percentage let statement and we will pass the list of all the numerical variables except weight as we wanted to focus on association between weight with other numerical variables in the fish data set. This will allow us to reference the macro variable in a code rather than listing these numerical variables. Let's do that. Proc sorry percentage let ind underscore where 
equal to length one, length two, length three, height and width. Now I will copy my code. Association of weight with other numerical variables and here I will pass our macro variable ind underscore where let's run the code if you see this panel of scatter plots length 1 and length 2 it seems that they show exactly the same pattern with weight and association between length 1 length 2 with weight is strong whereas length 3 has very strong association with weight however height is you can say moderately associated with weight variable whereas if you will see width it's again showing the strong linear relationship with weight but it is affected by outliers so that is the beauty of a scatter plot that you can get an idea that how your data looks like what is the association between your target variable with other independent variables and it also gives an idea that what type of the correlation coefficient might work for this particular data now let's see how we can calculate the various correlation statistic type using PROC or processor and we will start with the most common correlation statistic and that is Pearson correlation coefficient. Since Pearson correlation coefficient is a parametric test and we have already seen that weight with other uh, independent variables shows a linear trend and the other thing which we need to verify is that whether weight and these variables are normally distributed or not there are 159 observations in our fish data set and due to central limit theorem we can override that particular assumption because the sample size is greater than 30 but it is always a good practice to verify that whether our data is normally distributed or not and we are going to use the PROC univariate procedure just for the verification purpose Let's conduct the normality test. ODS graphics on proc univariate data equal to fish. I'm going to call the normal for the supportable test. Then we are going to call the variables on which we want to conduct the normality test. We are going to use weight and uh, length rate. For other variables, you can conduct the normality test and see whether they follow the normal distribution or not. Let me plot the histogram for variables weight and length 3. And I want to have mu equal to EST and sigma, which is my standard deviation. Stress inset skewness skewness and curtises qq plot weight and length 3 let me copy paste this thing and set now let's run the code since the sample size is less than 2000 we are going to use a sapiro will test and you can see the p value is less than 0 0.05 hence we reject the null hypothesis that the variable weight is normally distributed and you can see the histogram also and you can see there are certain outliers here it has a long tail on the right hand side and you can see the qq plot also and you can see there are some outliers and that is why weight variable is not normally distributed now let's see length 3 variable whether it is normally distributed or not again we are going to use Shapiroville test 
and you can see here the value is less than 0 0.05 hence we reject the null hypothesis that the variable length 3 is normally distributed again as i said if you have a sample size greater than 30 we can override this particular assumption for normality test but it is always a good practice to see the variables of interest are following the normal distribution or not now we will use PROC or procedure to produce Pearson correlation statistics and interestingly one can also produce a scatter plot for your data. Let's start with the correlation where the code is simpler and then we will learn about producing a scatter plot using PROC or procedure in a minute. So I am going to call the PROC or procedure data equal to fish. By the way, by default PROC or procedure generate the Pearson correlation statistics. Now I'm going to call all the numerical variables. Weight, length 1, length 2, length 3, height and width. Title, association of numerical variables and fish data set. Let's run the code. Sorry, spelling mistake. With. So you can see here, the first thing it has list the variables for which it has generated the correlation coefficient. Then in the second window, it has given you a basic descriptive statistic where it is telling you that how many observations are there, what is the mean value, standard deviation, min and max. So in the last window, you can see the Pearson correlation coefficient between the variables. For example, between weight and length one, the correlation coefficient is 0.91644, which means that it is very strongly associated with length one. You can see the p-value here, which is 0 0.001. So it is statistically significant and number of observations which are used to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient between weight and length one is 158. However, total observation in the data set are 159. There might be a missing data for weight and that is why it has been discarded when PROC or procedure used to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient for weight and length one. Similarly, you can analyze the association between different variables. Our focus in this session is to find out the association between our target variable weight with other numerical variables. And we would like to suppress some of the matrix. So what we can do is we can use the with statement in PROC or procedure. Let's see that. Let me copy this code. And I will remove weight from my variables. And I will use the with statement and I'll pass weight here. So for clarity, I am using Pearson option in PROC or procedure. Association of weight with other numerical variables in FISH dataset. Let's run the code. So now you can see here, we have suppressed the correlation matrix for unwanted variables. We are focused on analyzing weight with the independent variables, length one, length two, length three, height and weight. So you can see the correlation matrix as well as the p-value and the number of observations are used to calculate these matrix. One can also save this output using out equal to option of PROC or processor. So out equal to let's say fish underscore Pearson. So it is going to save a fish underscore Pearson data set in our work library. Let me call proc print data equal to fish underscore Pearson and run. Let's run this code. So you can see association of weight with other numerical variables in fish data set. This is the data set which we have saved as fish underscore Pearson and you can see the matrix here core weight with length one is 0 0.916 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 0 0.10 0 0.11 0 0.12 0 0.13 
0.924, with height it is 0.729 and width is 0.887. Now we are going to use the plot option in PROC or procedure to generate scatter in the matrix plot. Let me copy this code. Plots equal to scatter n var equal to all ellipse and you can see here we have generated the scatter plot and you have got your observations 158 what is the correlation value between weight and length 2 it is 0 0.9194 and the p value is significant it means it is less than 0.05 and you can see this particular scatter plot which we have generated using proc or processor. Now let me show you how we can generate a matrix plot which will be a combination of a scatter plot and histogram in the panel using proc or processor. Now there is one thing which we have to take care of when we want to generate a matrix plot using proc or procedure we cannot use with the statement that is one thing which you need to take care of plot equal to matrix and here we are going to call the histogram let us run the code and you can see here it has generated a scatter plot and you can see the association between the variables as well as it has also given you the histogram of the variable for example weight it is right tail distribution there are some outliers here whereas length one it seems to be normally distributed and you can see the association with different variables so this is the way you can create the scatter plot as well as the matrix plot using proc or processor till now we have conducted the parametric correlation statistics now let's conduct the non-parametric correlation statistics and we will generate the correlation coefficient for Spearman, Candle Tau and Hovding's D stats. Let's see how we can do that. Let me copy the code and let me call Spearman, Candle Tau and Hovding. That's it and let's run the code and you can see here we have generated the Spearman correlation coefficient, Candle Tau correlation coefficient and Hovding's dependence coefficients and you can see the correlation coefficient p value as well as number of observation required to calculate the Spearman correlation coefficient, Candle Tau as well as for Hovding's d dependence coefficient. Now one thing I would like to highlight Candle Tau is more robust than Spearman correlation and I'll prefer that non-parametric test. Moreover, if you will use Hovding D with Spearman correlation, one can know whether the relationship is monotonic or not. If you remember, in the beginning when we have created a scatter plot using PROC SG scattered, we had seen that there are a certain group of the fish whose rate of increase in weight is not in proportion when the length of the fish increases and it was not linear by looking at the scatter plot it was monotonic and we can confirm that by seeing the p values if you see the p value is less than 0 0.05 for spearman correlation coefficient for length 1 and weight similarly for hobding's d weight and length 1's p value is less than 0 0.05 hence we can say that the relationship between length 1 and weight has a monotonic relationship now let's discuss about partial correlation coefficient as we know that partial correlation measures the strength of a relationship between two variables while controlling the effect of one or more variables in our data set. By now we know that length 3 has a very strong association with weight. Let's control length 3 and see what impact is going to have the association of weight with other numerical variables. Let me copy the code let me call Pearson let me remove length 3 and let me call the partial statement 
and pass length 3. So here I am going to control the length 3 variable and I have called all the other numerical variables in our var statement. Now let's run the code. Now you see the impact of length 3 regarding the association between weight and the other numerical variables. Till now we have seen the weight has a positive association with other numerical variables. But this time that trend has changed at all. Moreover, if you will see the p value is now greater than 0 0.05. It means they are not statistically significant. So length 3 has a lot of impact. And if you are building up a predictive model, length 3 is a very, very important feature. You cannot remove it from your predictive modeling process. Now let's do another example. And if you remember, height does not have a strong association with weight. It has a moderate uh, sort of uh, association with the weight variable. Let's see if we control height, what impact is going to have on the other variables with weight. Let's see that. Let me remove height here and let me call length 3 and I'll pass height in the partial statement. Let's run the code. And you can see here, height does not have that much of impact on the association between weight and the other numerical variables. So if you are working on a predicting modeling process, you can drop that particular variable. Moreover, you also share this particular analysis with your stakeholders that which variable have an impact with the target variable. Always remember this thing. Correlation does not imply causation. When you are sharing your results with your stakeholders, always refrain yourself that this particular variable causes this. Correlation does not imply causation. Causation analysis is, is a different world altogether. And second, be wary of spurious correlationship. Now this particular chart, I have got it from tylervision.com. You can find a lot of great examples there. Now this particular example shows that whenever the Nicolas Cage movie release, number of people drown by falling into the pool also increases. Do you really think that there can be an association with release of Nicolas Cage movie and increase in people dying by falling into the pool. This is the spurious correlation. Be aware of this also. By this example, we come to an end of this session. Till then guys, take care and have a great day.